200 miles from Zimbabwe's capital, in the northeastern side, stays a marginalized clan of the Doma people, popularly known as Vadoma, with a rare condition of two tall feet. It takes a nine hour drive to Kanyemba district of Bire, where the tribe lives. Upon reaching the area, you are welcomed by small houses made of pole and dagger on ground, while some of the houses are raised to over a meter up. The moment your eyes are caught by that sight, you begin to feel the fading of a common normal life. Filmmaker Munyara Zimunaro visited Kanyemba district to get a glimpse of the Vadoma people's way of life and unearthed an untold story of this clan. The Doma people are a tribe living in the Kanyemba region in the north of Zimbabwe in the district around the basins of Mwaza Mutanda River, a tributary of the Zambezi River Valley. They are the only traditional hunter-gatherers indigenous to Zimbabwe. Just across the other side lives the Kunda and Shona people. The Doma people speak Dema language, but due to the mingling with the Shona people, they are also speaking Shona and Kunda. In the Christmas Kachasu, what one councillor, Mumbire Road District Council. Archaeologically, the Doma predominantly dwelt in the mountains, living largely a nomadic lifestyle of hunting, fishing, trapping, honey hunting gathering wild fruits and roots. Prior to the European colonization of Africa, the Vadoma also resisted incorporation into the Shona kingdom of Mutapa. This resulted in little access to fertile land. The Doma people who are popularly known as Tutod or ostrich-footed tribe have a condition known as Ectrodakli in which significant minority have the middle three tours missing and the two outer ones are turned in. This is an autosomal dominant condition resulting from a single mutation on chromosome number seven. Due to the Radoma tribe's isolation, they have developed and retained ectodaclin and their comparatively small gene pool has resulted in the condition being much more frequent than elsewhere occurring in roughly one in four infants. In all this, the Doma have accepted it and they have never taken it as a disability, but the deformity is simply viewed as a fact of life. The mountain homeland of the Doma has now become the safari area. In recent years, the Doma have been threatened by game rangers due to a crackdown on poaching. As a result, the Doma people are abandoning their hunter-gatherer lifestyle and move to the lowlands where they are now practicing agriculture, plowing using hoes since they don't own cattle, goats, or any domestic animals. 
the area where their fields are located is a low area which is a flood plain with no nutrients for the growing of crops. Subsequently, their fields are prone to floods which always occur every year. The floods don't only affect the field but together with their homestead. Pagure ne kure tinu ita rekodi kuti ukanyemba vanhu vaenda nemvura ukanyemba vanhu vanenda nemvura imba ye ye yakatondona mai manja patakato yakatonaiwa nemvura ndobva yadona This is a place uh, where the Doma people stay and uh, where what you are seeing it's a house homestead homestead for of a family for the Chiambo family um going there it's a field this field it's in uh, valley there's a lot of water which comes in here and uh, these houses they are prone to disaster if you could see to to my left there the house was destroyed by water and uh, they just leave it like that and then they move to another place to stay the Kunda people are more civilized in the district they have better lands and they harvest good crops yearly under favorable rainfall conditions during the cropping season, the Doma visits the Kunda counterparts, weeding and get food in exchange. However, they have become beggars at the mercy of the Kundas since they leave their fields unattended. In the Marxist theory, the Kunda people are always the upper class getting cheaper labor from the Doma people. Uh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> Providing food aid to the Doma people is only be sustainable for a season. Real help should be given to them during the cropping season so that they won't be searching for food but instead concentrate in their fields. The education system is still improving as there are two schools at the moment in the district. <laughs> Most of the Kunda children who live alongside the Doma people are the ones with the highest population at the schools. Very few of the Doma children have embraced education. Ah, 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 ah.
While in the district, there is one clinic which has limited medical resources. In this case, after getting sick, a few cross to Zambia using the canoes in the crocodile and hippo infested Zambezi river, dicing with death in the process. Since the Doma people are the traditional hunters and gatherers, when one falls sick, they usually use traditional herbs in some instances. Some just sit at home waiting for God's fate. When it comes to menstrual hygiene, the women resort to the use of dirty linen and so on. Most of the children are born at homes, which exposes them to many diseases. Early marriages are rampant, with girls getting married from as little as 14, and some of them could be younger. is also another problem since they have no source of income hindering the progress on a normal daily life. Children clad in tatters are the most feasible sites which could have been probably donated by well wishers. <laughs> While more wishes are needed to chip in, other organizers are relevant stakeholders from the government private sectors, NGOs, have done well to avert the situation in the district. Upon leaving the place, the children were amused by our vehicle, which hummed into life as we waved goodbye, a sign that it's not a common toy in their lives. They hold their waist and waved with smiles. <laughs>